Hi, I'm Willie and welcome back to my channel. So yesterday, oh, thanks for being here. But yesterday I released a video that talked about USG firewall rules. I think there is some confusion about the networks and how things function inside of the USG. So in this video, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the different types of networks that you can create with a USG. We're in our cloud key and we're going to hop over to the network setup and I'm going to delete, uh, I can't delete those because there are firewall rules that reference those. So what we've got to do is delete our rules real quick and I should be able to delete these networks. Okay, so When we look at the, the networks that are available to Unify, there's always the default network, and it's called LAN, and you'll see it's got no VLAN tag, which means that it's actually VLAN 1, and it's untagged. So by default, the native is untagged, but in this case, it happens to also be VLAN 1. So if we... Okay, so... Um, I had to plug in my drawing pad because we're going to draw on the screen here in a minute. So we're under networks. We've got our default network. It's what they call a corporate network, which means there are really there are basic firewall rules in the USG that keep people from you know connecting directly to a machine. But there are no other rules besides that. So if we go to create network, we're going to see several purpose networks available: corporate guest, VLAN only remote user VPN, site-to-site -site VPN, or VPN clients. So let's talk about these, okay? So you always have to select a name. So we're going to go down the line, and we are going to create a network of, of each type. Well, maybe. Site-to-site -site may not work, but we'll see. So the first one, we're going to call this corporate, too. And since it's on LAN, we're going to have to give it a VLAN tag because I can't have two networks that aren't or that uh, don't have a VLAN tag or on VLAN 1. This should not allow me to do that. So um, you can, on the USG, you can choose LAN or LAN 2. And I'm going to go at this from using LAN 1 for everything. So we've got corporate 2. So we'll give it a VLAN tag of 2, 192.168.2.1 slash 24. Give us a class C. Go ahead and update the DHCP range. Now, what has happened, or what happens when I click Save? Okay, you see we have Corporate 2. It's a corporate network, which means the firewall rules, there are none blocking 192.168.1.1 slash 24. It says 1.1 slash 24. The subnet's actually 1.0 slash 24, and this is actually 2.0 slash 24. Traffic is going to flow freely because this dot one is actually a layer three interface and it is paired up with the layer two VLAN. So this is VLAN one, it's untagged, and it's layer three interface is 1.1. This is VLAN two, right? So that's the layer two, and this is the layer three that coincides with it. And the USG, these interfaces are both on the USG. So the USG by default, is going to route traffic between those networks. All right, let's create another one. We'll call this one Guest. We'll click Guest. We'll give it a VLAN because it has, it's going to have to be tagged because we already, already have an untagged network. We'll call this 192.168.3.1. Uh, 24. Okay, so now what's going to happen with the Guest network is if we go over to routing and firewall, you're going to see this guest in, guest out, guest local. And what these firewall rules are going to do um, when we tag something as guest is it is going to allow DHCP and DNS from the USG. Uh, and it's going to allow you to get out to the Internet, but it's not going to allow you to get to any of the corporate networks. 
All right, the next one is VLAN only. So we'll call this VLAN only. And we'll give it VLAN tag of four. Now you'll notice that there's nowhere where I can create that layer three interface on the USG. So what's going to happen is now that we have uh, VLAN only, we can assign that VLAN to switch ports. And if machines are in that VLAN and we've manually assigned them or we have something else plugged in there that's going to hand out those IPs because the USG is not doing it, then um, right now, unless there's another device that has that layer three interface, those machines on VLAN 4 are only going to be able to talk to each other and they're not going to be able to get off our switch. So if we had another firewall and we configured a switch port for port 4, then it's going to get out to the internet. But it's not um, on the, the USG, so if we do it that way, these VLANs are likely not going to talk. So it's kind of isolated. It's kind of its own, um, its own network. So, and what VLANs do is it's virtual local area network. So you can have multiple LANs, and when you have a, a LAN, you break up a broadcast, um, a broadcast domain and a collision domain. So that's two reasons, and, you know, there's some security reasons why we would have VLANs. So if we go to this, we go to remote user VPN. If you go and you look at my uh, USG or my Unify remote user VPN, you know that... Uh, this is how you create either a PPTP server, which I don't recommend, or an L2TP server, which I do recommend. Um, this is how you create that on the USG. We'll save that. Now, that doesn't need a VLAN tag because when you connect to it, the USG is going to handle routing between the rest of the networks if you're sending all of your traffic there. If not, you have to have routes specified. All right, so here's our site to site. And you get a couple choices. You can use IPsec or OpenVPN. I recommend... Um, IPsec, and um, if you if you do auto, I believe it will it uses IPsec. But then you can choose another site. I don't have another site in another USG. But if you go back and you look at my go through my Unify videos, you'll see a Unify site to site. You literally just select your other site, you hit save, and it will automatically create that VPN for you. If you use IPsec or OpenVPN, then you have to run the, through the configuration of that. And then our last network type is VPN client. So what you can actually do is you can use the USG as a PPTP client to connect out to a VPN um, concentrator, and then you can route traffic to that. There's actually some instructions floating around somewhere where you can use this to connect to private internet access. I am not going to regurgitate that. Uh, PPTP is not my VPN protocol of choice. Um, it has been deemed insecure. Do not use PPTP. So that is the, the networks that are available to us. So we'll recap this here real quick. Okay. So um, let's take a look at this real quick. So this corporate network right here has no VLAN tag. That is a horrible color for what we're doing here. Okay, so this LAN is corporate and it's 192.168 and there is no VLAN tag, which means this is VLAN 1 and it is also untagged. Um, there are some parts of the world where you tag VLAN 1. You will never see me unless I'm working with somebody who has to have VLAN 1 tagged, um, like on a WAN interface in Australia. You'll never see me use that anywhere else, likely. Um, not saying it, it wouldn't happen. I'm saying the likelihood of it happening is, is slim to none. So we created corporate number two, and we gave it VLAN tag number two. So by default, this corporate network and the one down here these can talk to each other. 
because the layer 3, this is a layer 3 interface on the USG and there are no firewall rules that are keeping these guys from talking so they can exchange information back and forth. Then what you have is you have your guest network and it is its purpose is guest VLAN tag is 3 so when we created a wireless network for this we would tag it with VLAN 3 and this is the layer 3 interface it has created but we have those firewall rules that keep this guy segmented so that he can't talk to these other two networks. Then what we've got I'm running out of exciting colors here. Then what we've got is our VLAN only. And you'll notice there is no layer 3 interface, but there's a VLAN tag, right? So what this means is something else is doing the, the layer 3 for this. And we don't know what it is. And if there's no layer 3 for this, if there's no layer 3, this traffic dies. It doesn't go off the switch. No layer 3, no traffic. Off switch. So something has to get that, that traffic outside of that, that network. If, if it doesn't, I mean, it's just... it's. It's done. It's just how it is. I don't make the rules. I just play by them. Then we've got our remote user VPN, which is L2TP IPsec. And it does not need a VLAN tag because the USG will be doing all the routing for this. And then, of course, we have our... Um, our other two networks. We have our site to site. So this is, you know, an IPsec site to site. And then you have the VPN client, which is the PPTP VPN client. So you could take this guy out and connect it. And then you have to remember, too, that we've got all these rules, and by default, by default, all those corporate networks can all talk to each other. The only one that's got really special rules would be the guest, and the guest is going to be relegated to itself, but it is, and here's, um, so we don't, we don't have a, uh, so it allows, if you look at this, it allows, um, You know, we're going to allow DNS to, this is guest local, so this is services on the USG. So we're going to allow DNS and we're going to allow ping to that from the guest. And you can take a look at the guest out and the guest in. And you can see here that we accept... DNS packets, we allow packets to the captive portal, and then we drop everything else. But that, that guest network is not going to be able to get to any of these by default. So um, I hope that clears up some of the confusion um, I've got a lot of work to catch up on um, this weekend, but I'm going to try to get another video out uh, about some more of these firewall rules. But I hope that this video helped to clarify, because I was reading the comments and everything, and I was like, you know, maybe we didn't explain it as clearly as we could have. And I just wanted to answer any of those questions. So if you've got any more questions about the types of networks on the USG and how we're going to work with those firewall rules, put them down in the comments. As always, thank you for being here. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. 
Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please use those Amazon affiliate links down there. They don't change your price, but they kick a few bucks to the channel to keep this gear coming in. And uh, we will see you in the next video.